Good morning. Welcome to Cortland United Church. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning on a little bit of a rainy day. And those visiting here, as well as those who are joining us online. For our announcements this morning, I hope you'll notice your bulletin, upcoming activities, things within the life of our church. On the back of your bulletin, you will see that uh, we have Trick or Treat for UNICEF is next Sunday. So if you have a costume, wear it, and the kids will come around and collect the coins, and we'll do a trick-or-treat for UNICEF, and that'll be next Sunday during worship service. Also, our board meeting is this week online, so Zoom uh, this Thursday at 7 o'clock. We're doing our end-of-the-year reporting, so uh, we have a lot of decisions to get made this Thursday at 7 o'clock, and that is over Zoom. I was passed a flyer that the Veterans Day Hamburger and Hot Dog Dinner uh, is on November 7th in two weeks. So we'll put this on the board, and that's from 11 to 1 on Sunday uh, uh, the 7th. And they have Eat In or Carry Out, and that's at the Community Center. Do we have other announcements we want to lift up at this time? Any other announcements? If not, let's stand, greet one, one, one another. Make sure everyone feels welcome this morning. Good morning, John. How are you doing? Oh, I love the orange. That is just too cool. Good morning, Clint. Yeah, they were picked to lose. Psalm 34, verse 4 says, Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If you look inside your bulletin, there's some bulletin inserts that have the words to the songs we're going to be singing this morning. So if you want to pull those out, and then we'll be using the black book also. And if you're willing and able, would you please stand as we sing together, Great Are You, Lord, on the bulletin insert.
the other bulletin insert. Let's sing together, When I Look Into Your Holiness. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, when I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, I worship you. I worship you. The reason I I live is to worship you. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, when I found the joy of reaching your heart. When my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, I worship you. I worship you. The reason I is to worship you. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. If you take your black book and turn to 2088, Let's join in singing, Lord, I lift your name on high, number 2088 in the black book. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to bear from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross 
to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You may be seated. Let us join together in the call to worship that is printed in your bulletin, and if you would respond in the bold print. Come take refuge in the Lord, for God is good. Come rejoice in the Lord, for God will provide peace for you. Come open your hearts to the Lord, and you will be given blessing. Let us join together in the opening prayer, which is printed in your bulletin. Open our eyes, Lord. Help us to see Jesus as he reaches out to heal our blindness. Help us to let go of all those things that keep us in darkness. This day, as your word is proclaimed, let your hearts and souls respond with joy. Transform our lives to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, may we have the youth and the children please come forward for the children's sermon. Okay, has anybody been around babies? Anybody? Small brothers, sisters, any of that stuff been around? You will notice that your mom or dad, grandma and grandpa, when they have stuff, they'll have things that are ready for kids. So I got some things here. Everybody gets to grab one of these. These are actually Jolly Rancher flavored. So everybody gets to... You will notice in your mom or dad's backpack, they will have something. You want some? There you go. That... So when the kids are hungry, they can eat. And we, there you go. That's for you. There you go. And that's for you for coming up to children's sermon. All right. So what happens is, is when a, when a baby is crying, what do they need? Candy. What's that? Pacifier. What what do they call pacifiers? They call pacifiers or what'd you call them? Binkies, thank you. That's what we had. We had binkies. What color were your binkies? Pink. Pink? My kids just had the um, flesh colored. Remember those? They were just ugly as can be. Now they're just pretty cool. Yeah, all right. So, what else could happen if a kid's crying? What else would they need? Toys? What's that? One of those bouncy things? Yeah. What's that? Bottle. Thank you. What else does a kid cry? What else do they need? What else does kids need when they can cry? Diapers. diapers. <laughs> Change of diapers. So a lot of times there's one thing that they need, and they're crying to help make that happen. Well, today, someone comes up to Jesus, and they have a specific need, and they know who is going to fulfill that need, and that's Jesus. And so it's very interesting. He has all these people around them that are somewhat afraid to ask, and this person comes up, and they're going to ask right away because they have needs, and we do too. And so we need to learn to ask Jesus for our needs because sometimes we know what Jesus can do for us. All right, let's pray before we go back and pray with me. Dear God, help us to pray to your son. Oh, man, thanks for coming up. There are some more suckers on the way back if you want some. If you take your hymnal and turn to 199, let's join in singing Arise, My Soul, Arise, number 199 in the hymnal. Arise, my soul, arise, shake off thy guilty fears, the bleeding sacrifice. In my behalf appears Before the throne my surety stands Before the throne my surety stands My name is written on his hands He ever lives above For me to intercede Altered healing love 
his precious blood to plead. His blood atoned for all our race, his blood atoned for all our race, and sprinkles now the throne of grace. Five bleeding wounds he bears, received on Calvary. They pour effectual prayers, they strongly plead for me. Forgive him, oh, forgive, they cry. Forgive him, oh, forgive, they cry. Nor let that ransomed sinner die. The Father hears him pray, his dear anointed one. He cannot turn away the presence of his Son. His Spirit answers to the blood, His Spirit answers to the blood, and tells me I am born of God. My God is reconciled, His parting voice I hear, He holds me for His child, I can no longer fear. With confidence I now draw nigh, with confidence I now draw nigh, and Father, Abba, Father, She wishes to come read with me. Yes, she can. <laughs> the first scripture reading this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28, and that is found on page 212, if you'd like to follow along. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath which came later than the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The second reading comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52, and that is found on page 44 in the New Testament. They came to Jericho, as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This ends the readings. Thank you, Denise. Well, it is your lucky day for today's sermon, because my sermon is sitting on my living room table right beside my book at home, so it's going to be shorter today. I'll just guarantee, 
If it gets long, just get my, uh, my, my job as a preacher's kid was to sit in the back row, and when Dad got too long, we give the cut sign, and that, that was our job as kids is to let Dad know, yeah, we've had enough. So uh, I did that for years. Okay, so George Lucas, many of you will know, George Lucas is the producer of the great Star Wars movies. When the first Star Wars movies actually came out, They were nervous. Uh, George Lucas had helped uh, direct the um, American Graffiti, if you didn't know that. And it was somewhat of a success for the box office, but they were nervous about this new film he was about ready to produce. And they were going to have it over Memorial Day weekend, and there were some other big films that were going to come out at the same time. To the point they bumped it from opening on Thursday to Wednesday just because they didn't want it to get overwhelmed over the weekend. Because they couldn't see yet what a blockbuster 15-year movie thing this would be. Us seeing things. There was a 12-year-old girl who's house was on fire and her smaller sister who she was babysitting for was in the house she ran into the house with the house on the fire she grabbed her younger sister and she brought her out and people were saying how brave you were and she said i didn't even notice anything else i just heard my sister crying and that's all i noticed years ago they talked about our eyes actually were the first things that might turn us to sin Isn't that interesting? How important our eyes are on how we perceive things. So, just for a second, here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes. Do me a favor, close your eyes. I want you to imagine what Jesus looks like. Quickly, first image, eyes closed. Okay, open them up. What'd you see? What's Jesus look like? Light? A man? What's Jesus look like to you? The actor that portrayed him in the movies? For you, what's Jesus look like? I have a picture my mom gave me. It's an etching. And so my image of Jesus is that, does he have a beard? Of course he has a beard. (laughs) Isn't it interesting? Is he Caucasian? Of course he's Caucasian, because the pictures we've seen are all Caucasian. The reality is, he's probably not. He's of a different color than we imagine him. But, I mean, these images that we have when we close our eyes, because, really, it's the physical that we think of, but it's more than that. Um, I brought here before, for children's sermons, some of those things that all you see is um, etchings and colors and pieces all together, and you focus on them for a period of time, and then if you close your eyes, sometimes you can see with your eyes closed, a picture come. Some people can see it, some people can. It, it, it's what we can see. Different image I want to use, and it was from this morning. I was picking up Michael at his house. Outside his house, there's a beautiful uh, place where there's uh, a bird feeder all over in this beautiful little garden. And there was a squirrel trying to get at the bird seed. If you ever watch a squirrel trying to get a bird seed, they're amazing what they can do to get at the bird seed. They can crawl up, they can jump around, the squirrels will do about anything to get at food. Here we have a guy today who wants to find himself in the presence of Jesus. And he would be the last guy in that day they want want Jesus talking to. In that day, if you had a disability, it was because you were cursed by God. So they, they wouldn't want anybody around Jesus who had been cursed by God because they would be unclean. And so here comes a guy, and he in some way wants to get to Jesus because he wants something done. Now, I want to use some other images out of the Bible today. Uh, Moses, 
Moses could see when he had the people in the Holy Land, they weren't there yet. Remember that they got into the uh, working working towards the, the promised land and they were in the desert. They complained they didn't have food. That whole fiasco of the Ten Commandments as they were worshiping other gods. Moses could see they had work to do. Within the scripture, we have a Syrophoenician woman, and she needs her daughter healed. And she goes for a specific thing straight to Jesus to ask for help. There was the woman who had been bleeding for years, and she reaches out, and she just touches his cloak. She has a specific thing that she needs from him. And so today we have a guy named Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus has Jesus coming along the road, and he calls out his name. So, in the scriptures, you will hear, and Denise was reading it, and she was saying this guy was yelling out, Son of David, which is very fascinating. Biblical scholars, you are. It's the only term they use in the Gospel of Mark, is the only place you'll find Son of David. Why Son of David is so important is that they believed that uh, in the Gospel of Mark that the son of David, there would be this lineage that would go from David until the Savior. And it was interrupted after David because they were taken into exile. And so there were times that everyone was looking for someone to restore the order. So they were looking for the son of David to come and do that. So here's Jesus coming along the dirt path, the dirt road. There's Jesus. And there is a blind man who senses his presence. And he yells out, Son of David, as someone who would return them to that lineage. Then they were on the road to Jericho. Jericho was about 15 miles from the holy city. People who were coming along that road, they were going to the temple. So if you were a beggar, that's a really good place to be. Because if you want to find yourself in right relationship with God, you probably want to do it on the way to the temple. And then he says to him, teacher. Now, Remember, he called out him a variety of ways. The reason the teacher is really important to me is is when Mary met Jesus after Jesus was crucified, you heard the words, you've heard the words, Rabboni. That's teacher. Here's a blind man, not accepted in the temple, who was believed to be cursed by God, who is on the road who knows he needs Jesus' presence. And he says, Son of David, teacher, have mercy on me. And Jesus does what he does. He calls the blind man over and he asks, what do you need? So let me, you don't have to say this out loud. If Jesus came to you right now, and asked, what do you need? Would you know what to say? Well, we need the Huskers to beat Purdue this weekend because we're a few games short of the Big Ten Championship. Well, actually, you know, we're, I'm not getting enough people at my local restaurant and my, my, my food's coming slow. Well, uh, you know, I, or I ordered something over Amazon. It's a week late. Or in our soul of souls, what do we need from God? What do we need? um, If you go to a counselor, which I think we all need. Mickey, wouldn't you say, 
everyone needs a relationship with a great counselor. If you go to a counselor, here's what I found in my work in mediation is, is a lot of times we have parents who aren't getting along, and one wants to choose a counselor, and one likes them, and the other one doesn't. What you got to do is you got to choose someone that you trust what they say. You, you got to get to a point that you're not fighting everything they say. You're not, not believing every. It's in some way, it's a trust factor. And so as we come and we study and we pray and we do the things that we know that keeps us in a good relationship with God, because there are those moments when we feel like we're in the presence of God and we can ask for anything because we trust God. And we have to work hard to get there. Uh, I, I heard a line this week. I know this will shock you. Uh, it's about NFL football quarterbacks. Uh, they say that NFL football quarterbacks, there was only one playing right now that actually went to a prep school. Most NFL quarterbacks had to work their way through being great at what they do. Uh, they use a line that, you know, you were born with a silver spoon. <clears throat> the disadvantage of being born with a silver spoon, sometimes you haven't done the things to realize what you really want and what you really need because it's just been given to you. Our daily task as we relate to God is to have an understanding of who we are, where we are, and what we need. <clears throat> At home, on my table, on my sermon, I had a whole list of people who had special needs. And there were people you all recognized. You know, how, how many people People in our world today have ADHD or uh, OD. I mean, I, the list goes on and on of all, all of us. I, it makes me think of a movie. I loved this movie, and it was because of the music. It was The Greatest Showman. The Greatest Showman was the guy, uh, Barnum and Bailey. What was the guy's name? I can't even think of his name. Uh, he, he did the circus. And so when he was developing the circus, what he did was he put on posters. If, you, if you're somewhat unique... Come and show, and I'll, I'll put you on stage. And so in The Greatest Showman is this list that goes out the door. Somebody who's seven feet tall. A woman who has a beard. Remember growing up, you go to, go to the... It was like, they're different than we are. Our disadvantages may be our salvation. Because if we know we are not perfect, we know we need God. And if we know we need God, I think we get to the point we know what to ask for. Because we're always coming at God knowing that we don't have it all pulled together. This church has done some amazing things. The lift to get up the stairs is just a really smart move on this church's part. I remember when we were working on the elevator and we redid the carpet, we were going to get rid of the lift. We discovered that was not something we were going to do. People wanted the lift. Imagine the decision this church had to make to put in the elevator. You look, but what a great move. Making the church accessible is not just a lift or an elevator. It's a recognition that we all have disadvantages in our souls, and we all need the presence of God. And then we come here because the church is accessible. And we're the one, as Jesus is walking by, as he turns to us and asks, what do you need because of our relationship and trust with God, we will know what to ask. Because He loves us. And He wants us to give us what we need. Because He's our Savior. Amen.
take your hymnal and turn to 337. Let's join in singing, Pass Me Not. And if you're willing and able, would you please stand as we sing together number 337 in the hymnal. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let me at a throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Hearing there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me Spirit, save me by thy grace. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Thou the spring of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee? Whom in heaven but thee? Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me you may be seated. It's a time within our worship we lift up our joys and concerns from our community of faith. Do we have joys and concerns we'd like to lift up at this time? Yes. Oh, oh that's fantastic. Wow. Going to National FFA, got accepted to go to the National FFA conference and leaving very early on Monday morning. That's how, what, what size of group do you go with? Um, only, like, huh. Okay. So they're going on a bus to, to Nashville? Indianapolis. Wow. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Really cool. Do you have the FFA jacket? Yeah. yeah. Cuz in Lincoln that's what you know when it's FFA weekend everybody has the jacket on. All right. Other joys and concerns. I did get an email um from Jeff on John. Uh he said John continues to respond favorably to his treatments. He is slowly becoming active. Uh, starting physical therapy this week. Uh, he said, thanks for keeping in our prayers. So for John Monholland as he's going through his cancer treatment. So prayers for John. Any other joys and concerns? Thankful for the rain. Need, 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 need a little more. So, If no other joys and concerns. Yeah, John, go ahead. Yeah, stay safe in the midst of all the end of the harvest. Thank you. If no other joys and concerns, if John and Kay would help us to prepare our hearts for prayer.
Standing on the water, here's the cry of the poor. Standing on the one who will provide. Standing on the one who hears the cry of the poor. For they shall eat and be satisfied. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, we find ourselves in the midst of your presence. As we open up our hearts, our eyes, our souls, we notice that you are already here. We need you, O oh God, to get through every day. As we hear the joys of concerns, those in our community as well as those joys and concerns on our hearts, oh God, we know that you will lead us into our ministry. We are thankful that we are a part of a church. We're thankful for our youth and our children. We're thankful for our community. May we open our hearts and our eyes, O oh God, to the ministry and the needs that are around us and help us to be encouraged and inspired to reach out in need. And as those who've been loved and forgiven, let us now all join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive our tithes and our offerings. join together in the offertory prayer which is printed in the bulletin. May our gifts be used to answer the needs of those who seek you, O God, delivering them from their fears, listening to their cries for help, offering refuge to those who are searching for hope. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's remain standing. John, will you lead us in our last hymn? Psalm 34, verse 9 says, Taste and see how good the Lord is. We've got the green book, turn to 3155, and we'll join in singing, The Lord of Life, a vine is He.
sweet fruit for all to taste and see. If we be joined to him, we know his strength and power will help us grow. His Spirit's grace through us will flow to prune and shape us as we go. The vine is he, the branches we for now and to eternity. His word sown deep in us will be both sun and rain sufficiency. The Lord of life, the source divine, calls us to come with him entwined. Will we on hearing dare decline the call of Christ, the one true vine? Thank you for choosing to worship today. Let us be inspired by one another and the Holy Spirit to be in the ministry that God calls all of us to be in. In the name of Christ, amen. Oh. 